Hey y'all, it's Alec with Sharing the Journey. And as y'all know, my wife and I, Cindy, we travel the country full time in our RV and uh, we work camp our way across the country. We're currently in Rockport, so I'd like to say, please excuse the wind when you're on the beach, when you're on the coast, it's always gonna be windy. Um, today I wanted to talk to y'all about the Jeep Wrangler, which is the number one towed vehicle in the RV world. As y'all all know, we live full time in this motorhome. We use the Roadmaster tow system to flat tow our Jeep Wrangler behind our coach. Is the Jeep Wrangler the savior of the towed industry, so to speak? Well, my wife's wanted a Jeep Wrangler since we were in high school back when the CJs were a thing. This is a JL. And we have found that there have been a number of unexpected expenses that we've had to deal with here recently or in the near future with our Wrangler. So I'm sitting inside my Wrangler and uh, ours is a 2019 Jeep Wrangler Sport. And it's got the, I believe it's called the altitude package, which means that we have the bigger screen and it has XM radio on it. Let's see. So it has XM radio on it, but the big thing is it has this auto start feature. Now that's not an auto start. You can push a button on your key fob to get it to start. This is when you pull up to a stoplight, it turns on and off. But if we don't have this turned off, you can see it's got the light on it now, that it turns off and then has to restart. And so I don't like that feature, so I always turn mine off. Well, about six months ago, all of a sudden, that feature broke. And that light was always on, and the auto start did not turn on and off. And I thought that was a blessing, but it ended up being a very expensive problem. So if you hang on a minute, I'll tell you all about it. So after about six months of that little light being on and me thinking, oh my gosh, I don't have to remember to push that stupid button every time I get in the Jeep, the battery went dead, the big battery. This battery right here. Well, I would be able to jump it off, and if I drove the Jeep every day, it was fine. There was no problem. If I did not drive it, let's say I missed a day, the next time, the next day I drove it, I would have to um, jump the, the truck off, or jump the Jeep off. And so I would do that. And then I came down with a very bad stomach bug and I did not drive the Jeep for five days. Matter of fact, I was out of work for three days because of the stomach bug and I came out and it was dead as a doornail. So I got my jumper cables out, my jump box out, tried to jump it, it would not jump off. Had my neighbor bring his F-350 over, it would not jump it off. It was dead. So, I went up to our shop and I got a commercial um, battery charger, hooked it up, let it sit overnight, and the lights came on in the Jeep, but it would not crank. So I hooked it back up to the charger and let it sit for three days. And I was finally able to get enough power in the battery to turn the motor over and get it started. So I went down to O'Reilly's and said, hey, I think my battery's dead. And I told them what was happening and they said, it's not your battery, it's your other battery. I said, what do you mean my other battery? So located underneath this fuse box, this is where all the fuses are kept. 
the big fuse box outside, there is another battery. And it's like a little Fisher Price size battery. Um, and I said, well, okay, do you have that battery? He goes, yeah, I've got that battery. I said, well, can you install it? He says, no, we cannot install it because if it's not installed properly, you will short out the whole computer system. We had one of our employees do it. It was a couple grand to get it fixed. We will sell you the battery, but we can't do it. So I started looking online and I said, I can't change this battery because the battery is located underneath this fuse block. And so my understanding is what you have to do is you have to take off this tire and then you have to take off all of this and then located up in there is the batteries hanging from the bottom of the fuse block or fuse box. So I took it down to the Jeep dealer here in Port Aransas, which is the closest Jeep dealer to where we are in Rockport. And they said, oh yeah, this is very common that, how old's your Jeep? I said, it's a 2019. And they said, yeah, I'm surprised it lasted that long, but as soon as that battery goes dead, it keeps draining the big battery until it kills the big battery. Well, he said, I can't believe you got it started. Normally they have to be towed in. And I said, well, do you have the batteries in stock? He said, I do. He um, gave me a quote of $621. And I said, well, can I wait on it? And he goes, yeah. Well, he ended up giving me a discount when I got the Jeep back. It took them about two and a half hours. I sat in the lobby. Um, they said that they were able to give me a discount, so it was $578. So just know that if you have that feature on your Jeep, that, so just know that as soon as that auto start or econo start or soft start or whatever the heck Jeep calls it goes out, that you need to go get your small battery changed at a dealer before it ruins your big battery because I had to replace both batteries. So that's the first thing we saw popped up. And if uh, I will show you now, I'm gonna close the hood on the Jeep and I'm gonna show you now what we just noticed. And it's, I think it's gonna be very expensive. All right, so I'm out here. I got my trusty assistant. She came out to make sure I caught all the parts that were starting to bubble. So what I think's going on is there's rust coming up underneath the paint, causing it to bubble. At least that's what my northern friends say. So How let me. How is that possible? Do what? How is it possible? I mean, I I would think there would be cracks in the paint, and then the it would have gotten in to the metal for it to rust that way. But there are no cracks. There are no cracks. So let me show you what's going on. So we did spend some winter weather driving in snow in Minnesota. And if you were to get rust, I would think it would be like down in this section, something because it's just a lip, something that's exposed. But if you look right here, and I don't know if you can see it well on the camera, this is the back driver's side door. Now I've taken a picture and I will insert, I will try to insert the picture here, but it starts from here and goes to here. Maybe try to do the camera at this angle. But it looks like it's showing up. Is it? Yeah. And so this is the driver's side rear door. Now the front door? Nothing. No problem. So come around to the passenger side. How do you like that? Not all that wonder are lost. Come around here to the passenger side door again on this bottom panel down here there is no rust there is no bubbling of paint but if you look and I'll put the picture in so you can see but it starts right here and you can really see it right there but it starts right there 
comes all the way down here. So, and again, nothing on the front door. So they're gonna have to, I guess, grind this out right here, grind this out, same on the other side, and fill it with Oh wow, that putty. does look like a chip in the back. Yeah, that does like a chip up there. But, and they're gonna have to, I guess, fill that in with putty and then blend the paint to try to get it to, to match. I have not gotten a price on that. Well, so that's kind of to be expected a little bit because we were in salt roads for a winter and a half. But explain this one to me. So up here on the hinge, and I'll try to get it in. On the back side right here, you can see it's bubbling. I'll try, I took a picture with my cell phone and then one of those mark it ups. And so I'll drop, I'll try to drop the picture in for you to be able to see it better because I did get a decent picture. And then on the driver's side, the shades kind of, but it's right here along this edge. The bub, the paint is bubbling. And uh, so I'm thinking there's rust there. So I guess they're going to have to replace both these hinges or grind them down and repaint. But, you know, that's very disconcerting. Cindy, right here on this hinge too. I do not have a picture of this one, but along the top of this hinge right here on the bottom. And right here, we've got where the paint is bubbling. Oh, wow, that one is. So... Cindy, what does that make you think about the Jeeps? I'm very upset. She's very upset. But now we've, Cindy, you've wanted a Jeep since we were in high school. Yeah. And we love driving the Jeep. The Jeep is the easiest vehicle that we've towed. We had a Ford Escape, which had to be dolly towed. I hate dolly towing, won't ever do it again. Got rid of the Escape and the dolly and bought a Ford Edge. The only Ford Edge that can be Flat toed is the all wheel drive SEL model with the six cylinder. So I looked all over the place and I found one of those used. And uh, what I didn't like about that is you had to do like 10 things, you know, turn the key to accessory, then off. And anyway, it's a whole thing to get it to go into free the transfer case and so we drove that car till the wheels fell off we had a hundred and I want to say 160 170 thousand miles on it and uh, we started started nickel and diamonds to, de to, to death and when we were in Port Lavaca back in 2020 we found the adventure Jeep here and we love it but I'm a little worried about what it's gonna cost if any of y'all do body work or if any of y'all are Jeep experts and you know of what's causing that or if it's a known problem with Jeep, how about leave it in the comments. If you know about what it's going to cost to fix, oh, Cindy, look right here. Here's another one. I don't have a picture. Right here across the whole front of the hood, it's bubbling. So who knows? We may have to get the Jeep completely repainted. Um, we're too close spot right, right there. there We are too close to getting it paid off To get Not rid of right. it and I'll drive a vehicle with a little bit of rust on it Although I mean it, yeah, but if you don't get it fixed, it's just, just gonna, gonna get keep worse. doing it Yep, so I guess when we get back to Montana, we'll try to find a little shop and get a price on it Maybe when we come back to Rockport or wherever we end up next That'll give us about eight, uh, eight months know to save it. a good I... Jeep body shop, let us know. Yeah, because we're all over the country. I mean, I don't mind things wrong with it. Look at the windshield. I got tired of replacing <laughs> them. It's had a crack in it for over a year now. So, oh, and I've got all my ducks in a row. Um, so we've had... <laughs> I don't know, some are upside down. Yeah, we've had the cracks for a while. It's every time we get a new windshield and... In Texas, there's a $500 deductible on windshield. So every time we get a windshield within two months, it's cracked again. So I've just given up as long as the wind is not falling out. So anyway, those are the two problems. The first was just under $600, which 
really surprised me. I hate that feature anyway, but now knowing I had to pay $600 to bring it back to life is very disconcerting. And then I'm thinking the paint is going to be two to three thousand dollars these are unexpected issues that i don't think we should have on a not quite five-year-old vehicle so anyway if you have any suggestions if you've had similar problems please leave it in the comments and until then happy camping stay safe if you want to support the channel go to our about me page the link for buy me a coffee and the link for our Amazon affiliate uh, is in there. If you wanna use it, awesome. If not, we'll still be friends. Anyway, until next time, I'll talk to you later. Happy camping.